today we're making a video about freezes and triangulated polygons and in particular how you can cut a freeze and how you can also cut a triangulated polygon and this corresponds to each other. Freezes they are just like arrays of, uh, of numbers essentially um, and there is actually uh, already a number file video about freezes. So that's the way to construct a freeze pattern consisting of positive integers. And I quickly want to recall how they are related to uh, triangulated polygons. Uh, so first of all, I should probably tell you what is a freeze. So uh, we start with a row of ones. And so this goes infinite in both directions. And then we just have other numbers. So I'll, I'll call them A1 and so on. And then we have here B1 and so on. So they are always like shifted by a little offset here. And so it goes on. But the ones I'm interested in, they stop again with a row of ones after a while. I have here exactly W what I call non-trivial rows. So it's like a sandwich. Yeah, it looks like a sandwich. So you might think, okay, this is also, I can put any numbers in here, but actually that's not true. So I, I, I want like uh, specific conditions on these numbers. So all entries are positive integers. So this is just like one, two, three, and so on. So nothing else. Can zero go in there? No, no, no. That's very important. Zero, no zeros. And then they also have a rule, which is called the diamond rule. Namely, whenever I have a diamond, so something in this shape here, so I have, I call them A, D, B, C, then they have to satisfy A times D minus B times C equals one. Every diamond that you make. Every diamond I make. Yeah, so, so you might be thinking, oh, is this even possible? And well, I can give you lots of examples. So there exists like infinitely many. So, so for each width, you have like finitely many, but so you can find, uh, in, in total, you can find infinitely many of these freezes. And in fact, so this is the, the amazing theorem that was discovered by Conway and Coxeter like 40 years ago. Uh, 72, it's not 40 years ago, it's probably 50 years ago, right. uh, like 50 years ago. So this is the Conway-Coxeter theorem that says, actually these, these freezes here with, with these conditions, so uh, I'll call them, so freezes width, so the W is uh, the width uh, of width W, there are in bijection, so this means like, so we, we take a freeze and then we can exactly find a triangulated polygon with W plus three vertices. And this doesn't seem very obvious, so let's, let's give you an example. So it's, I think it's easier to start with the polygon. Um, so I'll choose W equals three. So I'm looking at a hexagon. So I call this W plus three, I call this N. So we have three rows, and so we want to uh, relate this to the triangulation of a hexagon. Um, and uh, so I, I start drawing a hexagon, and then I number the vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I choose a triangulation. So in fact, you can find 14 different triangulations here. Um, and I'll, I'll choose a very like regular one. This is what's called the fan triangulation. So how do I get a freeze with three rows from this? So what I just do, I'll count the number of triangles incident to each vertex. So if I'm at vertex one, I have four triangles incident. At vertex two, I have one. Here I have two. Here I have also two. Here I have two. And here I have one. So I get the sequence here. And so now I will just put the sequence four, one, two, 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 one in the first row of my freeze and then like just periodically continue with it. And so I start with four, one, two, 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 one. So here it ends, but then I'll just continue four, one, two, two. And also on the other side, I can also continue one, two, and so on. And now with the freeze rule, we can calculate all the other entries in the freeze. So we have four times one minus one times three is one, one times two, so one, three, Three, one, three. You're now making all the diamonds obey that rule. Exactly. Yeah. You can also like you write this in the form C equals A D minus one divided by B. 
That's how you calculate these numbers. And so the minute you put in a second row, your hands are tired now. Yeah, so, so with, with the first row, I have completely determined what will happen for the other rows. Um, and so let me just continue here. So I'll just get threes and ones here and here also. Um, and then here I get two. And so now you already see something like exciting happens. So we actually uh, get the same numbers back but shifted a little bit. So we, here we have one, four, one, and here we also have one, four, one, two, 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 one, four, one. And then you see if I compute the last row, then magically I get back to my ones and I have a freeze of width three. You said there were 14 ways you could have triangulated your hexagon. Yes, and I mean, this is known because the number of triangulations of an n-gon is precisely the, the Catalan number. And so, yeah, it's, it's growing very quickly. Um, and, and actually, this is like... And you, and you could have used the other ones to make the freeze work? So you can also see like shifting. So, so starting at a different vertex just would mean like I, I rotate the polygon. But of course, there are also different triangulations. For example, you get like something different if you do this guy here. And yeah, you will also get... A you'll get a freeze that gives you the, the ones and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could I sit there and come up with a solution that doesn't fit a triangulation of a polygon? Uh, no. Then, uh, so, so if you just put random numbers in here, so what usually happens, your freeze will just go on forever. That's, uh, that's the thing. Or you might get like uh, uh, rational numbers at some point. Uh, but these are the only ones where you only have positive integers and they, as we say, this terminates, meaning you get back to your row of ones. That was, an, that was an amazing connection to, to have made, it seems to me. Like, I, it seems like a, an odd connection. Yeah, I mean, this is, so, so this is coming from this paper of Conway and Coxeter. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's completely, it, it was like a, a very strange discovery. And, and also like they wrote two papers together. They're in a, written in a weird way. So the first paper is just questions. And the second paper is the answer to these questions. And somehow this seemed to be like relatively unnoticed because it's just like combinatorial uh, playing around with numbers. But then actually at the beginning of the 2000s, there was like this theory of cluster algebras that's interesting in total positivity and, and yeah, algebra and representation theory. And then these freezes were rediscovered because they captured some important cluster combinatorics. What do you want to show me next? Okay, the next thing is I want to show you, oh, you can actually also get the freeze by not looking at this first row or the, or the triangulation. So you just take your triangulation and you can put in some numbers uh, that, uh, in the freeze and then also complete the freeze in a different way. And so how is this going to be? Uh, so basically, I have arcs in my polygon. So let me draw again my hexagon here. And I number again the vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I have arcs in here. So where an arc is always the like, straight line between two numbers. And so for each pair of numbers, I get an arc. These are called boundary arcs. They're always of the form like n, n plus one. And then the arcs here, so if I draw the triangulation from before, then I have one, five, one, four, and one, three. But of course I have also two, four. So I have, e for, for each pair of numbers, I have an arc. So two, four exists, even though you didn't use it in your triangulation. Yeah, so, so it's there, but it's, it's not part of my triangulation. So in total, you can like draw all possibilities and you get this star. And so if now we have the arc, so these are all like pairs. I'll, I'll just write them in this way. So I and J are these integers, and I can always write them as I, J. And I just, so since like two, five is the same as five, two, I just order them. So I say, so here n is 6, so I say that 1 is less or equal to i is less than j is less than 6 in this example. And so I have these numbers. So how many do you have of these? So I have like n choose 2. And these are like my coordinates in the freeze. And so now we can draw the entries in the freeze. So I'll just put the boundary edges in the first row. So 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. Five, five, six, and then, so it would continue with six, 
seven, but there is no seven, so I would need to write six one, but I'm, I'm just finishing here for the moment. And then in the next row, I'll take the first entry uh, here and the second entry here. So I have one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six. And then again, uh, I'll stop here because the next entry would be five, seven, doesn't exist. And so here I have one, four, two, five, three, six, and then here, I have one, five, two, six, and here I have one, six. And back, back where you started. Now, these are all the possibilities, but now, well, this is not a freeze yet, but what I can do is I can just reflect this, and then I'll just draw this here, and this would be the, the natural continuation, because here the next entry, as we sa as saw before, would be 6, 7, which is 6, 1. So here goes 1, 5, because the entry would be 5, 7. So we don't have uh, a 7, so we replace it with a 1, so we get a 1, 5 here. And then here, do the same game, I would get a 1, 4. Here I would get a 1, 3, and here I would get a 1, 2. And so we can just continue, and then now you already see this diagonal is the same as that diagonal. Then I do two, three here, two, four, two, five, two, six. And uh, what do I have up here? So I have two, seven, which is again, one, two. So it's again the next one. And now I'll three, four, three, five, uh, three, six, four, five, four, six, five, six. And, and so, so you can just continue in this way and also in the other direction and you see you will get again something that looks already like a freeze, although there are no numbers, there are just these arcs in there. Okay. Okay, and so how do you get the freeze from before now? Uh, so, so this is now we, we put numbers and so there's a very easy rule how to get exactly the freeze we had before, namely for all the arcs that uh, correspond to an arc in the triangulation, I just put a one in the freeze. So the solid ones. Yeah, so the solid ones, I'm trying to like draw them in red now. So these are these three, and then also for a triangulation, also these boundary edges, they're also part of the triangulation. And so the first thing we see is like, oh, the boundary edges are actually the last and the first row. So these will be our ones. Yep. And then, so what are the, the solid rows? So they're one, three, one, four, and one, five. And so now I have to like complete the freeze uh, with the freeze rule. So let's, let's see if we can do that. Well, the question is, have you got enough information already to freeze it, to, to, yeah. to finish it? Yeah, exactly. So first we needed like all these like six numbers uh, from the vertices, but now I only gave you three numbers, namely the ones, and of course all, all the boundary edges. But is this also enough? And in fact, it is enough, you can compute now, so two times one minus one, then here three times one minus one, and here we have four. Then uh, here we put a two, here we put a uh, three, and here we put a, a one, and here we have a two again, here we have three times one, and here we have one, I think. And so... That one you got there, you could also have got that using your other rule, couldn't you? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's also a solid. The, yeah, it's it's just here also the, the first the first row. So so you, you can now go on and so here you would get a four. So you see this here, this is already all the arcs, and then here now we, we could have also already written those four uh, three numbers in because we already know that these are ones and so now i already know what's go uh, getting in here because i already calculated this here so i just have to like flip it over and this is the second copy and then now you already know what's happening because it's like really just the copy of this thing and this goes here and, and we can continue like that and uh all freezers work like this with all polygons and all versions of triangulations. Yes. Do you keep getting these repeating triangles? Uh, yes, it's always, it's always the same pattern. And uh, so it's, it's very easy to do if you have a, a triangulation like this, like a fan. And the one I gave you before, so this one here, so I'm not going to do this because you actually like have to use a little uh, calculations because if you see like what, what are uh, the entries corresponding here, so one, two, three, four, the arcs. five, six, then you see this is not like 
just like this diagonal, uh, this will be well, oh, so one, 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 one. So you would have here uh, one, then you have here some entry, then you have another one, so this would be the three. Um, but if, you, if I just give you the ones, then uh, here I get this pattern here. And yeah, you have to calculate all these like uh, stars here. And yeah, this is, I mean, it's not uh, really complicated to do that, but it's not like just like uh, as easy as in the other case. These two ways that you're able to correctly populate a freeze, they seem different, but they also seem pretty related. Yes, I mean, it's, it's the same freeze. And I, I think, yeah, the, the thing with the, with the diagonals, this was certainly known to already Conway and Coxeter. Seeing that this with the ones work, you can actually show this with, with using the, the cluster algebras because the entries in the freeze, you can see them in a different way as like entries in a cluster algebra or also like uh, they're also coming from cluster categories, which is another like concept in, in cluster theory. So, so now I want to show you something uh, about, so, so we know now like uh, triangulated polygons correspond to these freezes. And if you have a triangulated polygon, one thing that's like uh, what you, you can think of is like, oh, I can actually cut the polygon into two smaller triangulated polygons. Um, so, so let me give you a different example. So we take an octagon, so here N is A, and I'll put the triangulation, so similarly as before. So this is my triangulated polygon, and let's say if I... And that will give us a freeze where there are width five. Exactly, so we have five, five rows, but then, well, I might cut it along here, so cut the polygon, and so if I do that, then I will get a, just a rectangle, or, or like a foregone. Quadrilateral. So, quadrilateral, that's the right word, I always forget. We get this quadrilateral, which is still triangulated, and the other part is a hexagon. It doesn't have to be regular, and all of them are still triangulated. And, well, can you also do this with freezes? And I mean, you, you might, I mean, since, since we know that all the entries of the freezes correspond to, the, uh, uh, correspond to these arcs, we should be able to do that. Um, but, but how? And so, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, uh, how this works, uh, but I have to draw the freeze first. you can get this by either of the two methods. And maybe I should tell you what my entries are. This would be the one, two, this would be the one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, and one, eight. I'm just drawing these arcs in the first so that you can like complete it. Um, and you see already here the ones are the ones in the triangulation and then for the one six, which is not in the triangulation, you just get a higher number. And there's actually also a way to explain these higher numbers. Uh, so this is uh, also this is some combinatorial rule about perfect matchings, and it's done by uh, uh, Brolin, uh, Kra, and Isaacs. So, so I wouldn't have had to sit there and do the diamond method. I could have actually used the picture of the polygon to figure out Ex what the numbers are. Exactly. You could also. Uh, you could also do that, but that's some more like combinatorially involved. So I think the diamond rule is easier. So there are certain arcs that don't exist anymore. So 2.5, so that is not there anymore. So, so it's like, it, it shouldn't be part of, of the two uh, smaller freezes that we get. And so how do we like see those uh, arcs? We want to get, we want to cut our freeze along one four. So uh, here is the one four we look for the one four arc in our freeze. So that is here. And so this is the first copy and the one four is again here. So if you remember, we had this like uh, this triangle and then we just take the other triangle. And so we have the one four here and then you see this is another one four. So we have marked our one fours and then 
We are just starting at our 1.4, going up until we hit the boundary. And then from there on, we're going down until we hit the 1.4 again. And again here, we're going down the diagonal until we hit the boundary, and we're going up here. And we are landing at this exact one. So this is always the 1.4. And so we can continue this. And so if you like, look up which entries these are. So the entries in these uh, red rectangles, these are precisely the ones that the, uh, correspond to the arcs that do not exist anymore. So these are the ones that we have to delete from our freezes. So what we should get is we have a quadrilateral and a hexagon. So we should get a freeze of, uh, with one. So we only have one diagonal here. And this should be a freeze of width three. And yeah, you can kind of see them. So the freeze of width three is up here. And so this would be the, the hexagonal freeze. And the other one, this is now the quadrilateral freeze. And so you see, this is like really like a miracle. The numbers here, they still satisfy um, the, the diamond rule. So, well. So are you saying if I if I cut that out, like with scissors, and cut that out with scissors, and join them together, yeah. I could make another freeze yeah, there that would work. Then you get exactly the freeze. Uh, like uh, uh, Same freeze. here. If I cut yeah. that out and that out, we've got another freeze. Yeah. So you, you cut that in half to make those, and you've cut your freeze to make the two freezes that correspond to those. Exactly. That's pretty cool. What about these? What about these? Do the, do these make anything interesting or is that just like rubbish? I mean, rubbish? they're just like, they, they don't exist in this picture anymore. So we have to delete them. So yeah, just not there anymore. But I mean, I feel like there must be some meaning to these numbers. You must be able to do something with them, join them in some cool way. Or... Uh, <laughs> That's well, your next maybe. project. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this is the, the other way is also like, this is also interesting. You, you start with two smaller freezes and then you like glue them together. And how do you actually get these numbers? And I mean, it's, it's not clear, uh, except of, that you can always calculate these numbers. For proving this, you, you, you can actually use some, some category theory. So, so that's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> so is this, was this your work? Are you involved with this? Um, yeah, so we, did, we, we showed this with the, with the cutting freezes that uh, was, just gives us, again, uh, freezes. So, so it was already known to Conway and Coxeter that you can cut off these like triangles on the side. That's actually how they proved their theorem. So they're using an induction uh, result, and this goes by like they, they cut off one of these like triangles on the side, and then they show how the uh, how the freeze or like the quiddity uh, sequence. Uh, I didn't say anything about the quiddity sequence, but like how the first row of the freeze changes. Um, so so they know about uh, how to like get uh, cut along uh, cut out triangles. But then the, the more general picture, yeah, it's, it's, we proved this recently with uh, uh, Bethany Marsh and uh, Matt Pressland. Uh, and so we were actually interested in like Frobenius X-triangulated categories. And this is a byproduct uh, of, of that work. So it wasn't like you sat around thinking, oh, I wonder if we cut this in half, do we cut the freeze in half? You were doing something else and this kind of fell out of it. Yep. Okay. I mean, the motivation was still the freezes, but then, yeah, we, we just like do that for these categories. Um, and yeah, and you can also like, what, one fun, funny thing is like, which, which is, is actually uh, um, what happens if you cut along an arc that is not a diagonal. So, so you could also like think of, oh, I actually- What was, wasn't part of your triangulation. Yeah, that wasn't part of my triangulation. And I mean, then you, we already know, oh, if, if I choose one of these, then uh, the number that's associated to it won't be a one. Um, and so you can still, so you can still do this thing. Like you, you, you look for the number, then you like look for the maximal uh, rectangle. Um, but then uh, somehow your freeze rule will change, and you will get something that's called a freeze of coefficients. And yeah, people are like still researching them currently. It kind of reminds me of things like Sudoku and stuff like that. Like it, it feels recreational it feels yeah like. i mean this this yeah this is like also conway and coxeter they they basically i think this was uh, was a, f a funny game um but yeah it has i mean it it has this like very categorical interpretations with or, or like yeah representation theory essentially uh which has which is if you look at it, it's much more complicated than just cutting and gluing polygons. So I think if you, if you like 
think about these like geometric models, it helps us to actually prove some like really involved mathematical theorems, so, uh, like really uh, theoretical uh, results that can be used for other things. This diagonal and maybe this one and possibly this one. Okay, so now we have five triangles which make this heptagon and I will write numbers at every vertex and the number is the number of adjacent triangles. So for example, this vertex has exactly one triangle adjacent to it, so I write one here. This vertex has four triangles, so that is four. 